In this video, we want to learn how to find critical Z values. Now, what are critical Z values? Well, the confidence level fills up the center portion of a Z curve, and the critical Z values are the left and right boundaries of that confidence level. Now, why they're so important, if we go back and look at the formula for the one proportion Z interval, the confidence interval we have to make in this section, you can see that Z is part of that formula. So we need to know how to find Z in order to be able to use this formula. Okay, now here's the thing. If your confidence level is in the middle, remember that your alpha and your confidence level are complements of each other. Now what is that going to mean? It means they add up to 100%, which also means, let's make a note over here, that alpha is the area in both the tails. It looks like a sideways fish, but it's alpha, right? And your confidence level is the area in the middle, right? So if alpha is the area in both tails, because that means together they add up to 100%, then each of these is alpha divided by two. That's where that comes from. So this area over here would be alpha over two, and this area over here would be alpha over two, and together they'd make alpha. All right, now let's actually put this together to find a value. So we're going to determine the critical values in each of these cases. So the first thing we have is a 95% a confidence interval for a proportion, which is good because proportion one is the one that uses the Z, right? Proportion, prop, proportion. So that's the one we want. Okay, well, this is going to be pretty easy because I just kind of draw that picture above. I shade the middle and let me grab a highlighter. So that central portion is 95% and I'm going to label it as such. So this is 0.95 in the center. I have my negative Z and my positive Z. And then the alpha over twos are actually just a notation thing. So um, if you want to draw them, you can, but I I'm not requiring it. Um, so if you want to write it over here, it's just a subscript. It's just a notation. It, it, it's fine. I mean, it, it relates to the graph, but it's fine. Okay, so how do we find these? Well, it's a normal curve. It's a Z curve, in fact. So you can tell it's a Z curve because it says Z's and has the center of zero and a standard deviation of one. So that means that we can use StatCrunch. All right, so let me grab StatCrunch. And I'm going to go to Stat, Calculators, Normal, because it's the normal curve. Now, I noticed that I want to click between because it was a central area that was shaded and had two tails. The mean is zero, the standard deviation is one because it's the Z curve. And then all you have to do is put your confidence level in right over here. So that's your area right there, your confidence. And then you click compute and there are your values right there. Now it says X in there, but we know this is actually a Z and the computer doesn't know to change it. And that's okay. All right, so let me write that out. So the probability that negative 1.96 is less than or equal to z, which is less than or equal to 1.96, equals 0 0.95. So your answers are this value and this value. That's it. Another way to say that is plus or minus z equals plus or minus, oops, plus or minus 1.96. And again, if you want to write the alpha over 2, that's fine. It's not strictly necessary. All right, now what about this one? Well, that's a little trickier because they're giving us alpha. So we have to remember that alpha is the area in both the tails. So, which is fine, right? Or let, let's put it this way, right? Remember that alpha and the C level are complements of each other. So, and that's the first question it asks is what confidence level would use this? So. Um, 1 minus alpha is your C level, right? Because they're complements of each other. So 1 minus 0 0.005 is 0.995. So that's our confidence level. So that answered that question. So it wanted to know what confidence level would use that. So there we go. And then we just draw another picture. Now this was 0 0.95 shaded. 0 0.995 should actually be a little bit more shaded, right? Because it's it's bigger confidence, so it's a bigger center. So I'm going to shade a little bit further, a little bit more. There we go. Not perfect, but it'll work. Okay, so this is 0 0.995. This is negative Z, this is positive Z. 
I'll put the alpha over 2 notation in it just to be more fancy. Okay, so I just have to go back to stack crunch and change my C level and I'm done. So let me grab stack crunch. Again, it's between. I just change my area right here to 995. Say compute, and there we have it. So negative 2.807 and positive 2.807. Of course, writing this out this way is kind of showing the work. Um, that way, if you mess up, your instructor will know what you did. Um, so plus or minus z is plus or minus 2.807. And there we go. So you just have to remember that um, C level and alpha are complements. So I'm, I'm going to put a little note here. Right, they're complements that's why they add up to 1, right? That's why when I take alpha away from 1, I have the C level, and vice versa. If I took the C level away from 1, I would have alpha, because they're complements of each other. And I was following the instructions right up here. Clicked between, put my C level in, and boom. Now I'm actually going to show the table as, as well as the TID4. The table is really easy. It's just, you know, if you know what your alpha is, then you can kind of, or alpha over 2. I take it back, and <laughs> it's not that easy, but um, I, I'm going to show the table and I'm going to show the TID4, but if you're comfortable with using StatCrunch, you can just skip ahead to the next video. Alright, so the TID4 is a little tricky. Um, so TID4, let me grab it, we're going to need inverse norm, but in order to make it work, we're going to need to know what alpha over 2 is. Okay, so let me hit second distribution. I'm going to be using inverse norm. Now, if you have a new calculator, it's it's not that hard. You can just take 0 0.950 zero and 1 and say center, because it's essentially the same thing that the between button on StatCrunch does. Lovely. There they both are. Everything's great. The problem is if you have an old calculator. So if you have an old calculator, you have to use... Um, inverse norm, and then you have to tell it the area in the tail, but only the tail over here. It can't be both tails. So you have to figure out that this area and this tail, here I'll just do it in green, alpha must have been 0 0.05 because the C level is 0 0.95. So alpha over 2 is 0 0.05 over 2, which is 0 0.025. And so that's what this tail is right here. So this is 0 0.025. And that's what you have to put into the old calculator. So you have to tell it 0 0.025, 0, and 1 paste, and it only gives you, oops, I'm sorry, 0 0.025, 0, and 1, and it only gives you that one. So here, let me go back, 3, 0 0.025, 0, and 1, paste, enter. But once you know one of them, you know the other one because they're the same number, it's just the other one will be positive. But the tricky bit on the old calculators is you have to find alpha over 2. That's what that notation's standing for, the area in the tail, right? So this is alpha over 2. Alpha over 2 is 0 0.025. All right, let me do it again. So this one, I know that alpha is 0 0.005. So alpha over 2 is 0 0.0025, right? 0 0.005 divided by 2. And so that means this tail over here is alpha over 2, which is 0 0.0025. So I would go put that in to my calculator. So um, inverse norm, oops, I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> Quit. Inverse norm. 0 0.0025, 0 and 1, and there we have it. So it's just a little bit more tedious. If you have a newer calculator, it's it's easier because you can just say, hey, I want 0 0.995 and tell what center, and it'll be fine. There they both are, right? So newer calculator versus older calculator is different. Now the table uses the alpha over 2 as well. So if you have the table, let me bring it in so you can see it. Um, you would go to the area in the tail, which was 0 0.025, which is 
oh, a column in here somewhere, and you can see it's like a fifth column in. At the bottom, it's 1.960, down there at the bottom. And 0 0.0025 leads to 2.807 at the bottom. So it's the same thing as with the calculator. You have to use the alpha over 2 piece. So I lied a little bit when I said, you know, alpha over 2 is just a notation. It is, but it's, it, it's related to it. Um, you used to need alpha over 2 a lot more with, as you can see, with the table and with the old calculators. But with StatCrunch and the newer calculators, it's not as required. So um, I can write it down for myself just so you can see. It was inverse norm, so this is the TI-84. It was inverse norm. I'm going to write the old one because that's the one that is the harder to do. 0, 2, 5, 0, and 1. Right? Or you could do inverse norm if you have a new calculator you'd say 0 0.9501 center, like that. Down here, it would be inverse norm 0 0.9950 center. If you have a new calculator, oop, if you have an old calculator, it'd be 0 0.0025. 0 and 1. Right? You have to use the alpha over 2. So if you're using the TI-84, write whichever one of those um, works for you. Again, I, I think StatCrunch is easier than both of these, but that's just me personally. Um, so I hope that helps.